So let's pick up where we had left off the specimen of the brain, we just build up on it. As per usual pattern, we are going to first demarcate certain special cell kind, then we will see the various gyri, and then we'll put some functional areas in that, and we'll see what are those areas. You can see that we have highlighted three sulci. One sulcus was already there, which we have just highlighted, that's the lateral fissure of Sylvius. And we had also mentioned that the portion of the brain below the lateral fissure of Sylvius is the temporal lobe. On the lateral fissure of Sil uh, on the lateral surface of the temporal lobe, the temporal lobe, if you were to really understand the whole thing in totality, think of it as a long rectangular cuboid. Therefore, the temporal lobe has a superior surface, a lateral surface, an inferior surface, and a medial surface. In this picture, what you see here, you can see only the lateral surface. The superior surface is hidden inside the depths of the lateral fissure, but we will separate it out and we will show you. The inferior surface is below this, obviously we cannot see it in this picture. And the medial surface, obviously also we cannot see in this picture, but I will show it to you in another slide. So let's focus on the lateral surface. We have demarcated two other sulci on the lateral surface. The upper one is called the superior temporal sulcus. And the lower one, paradoxically, is called the middle temporal sulcus. I mean, to my way of thinking, it should have been called inferior temporal sulcus. So don't ask me why it's called the middle temporal sulcus. Just to take you one step back, it's the superior temporal sulcus. At the end of it, we had seen area 39. But anyway, let's come back to the temporal sulcus. By these two sulci, we have demarcated the entire lateral surface of the temporal lobe into three gyri. The superior temporal gyrus, the middle temporal gyrus, and the inferior temporal gyrus. Now let's put some functional areas in place. Let me take you to the inset picture first. The inset picture has actually demonstrated the superior surface of the superior temporal gyrus. There's a small parallel gyrus here on the superior surface, which is shown diagrammatically here. It is not on the lateral surface, it is on the superior surface. That is called the parallel gyri of Heschel, or more precisely, the primary and the secondary auditory area, areas 41 and 42. So that is what has been demonstrated here diagrammatically, but actually it is located on the superior surface, which means it is hidden inside the depths of the lateral fissure. What is the function of this area? This area is responsible for perception of sound, auditory area, primary and secondary. We consider them together as the auditory area. Now let's come to the next functional area. We can see another functional area, which is posterior to the auditory area and which has been numbered 22. This is also in the superior temporal gyrus. It is posterior to the primary auditory area. Again, it has been diagrammatically shown here on the lateral surface. It is partly on the superior surface, partly on the lateral surface. This is called the auditory association area. What does this do? This receives impulses from the primary and the secondary auditory area, and it processes the sound, and it helps you to recognize the sound. So therefore, if there's a lesion of this auditory association area on the dominant side, the person is unable to recognize the sound and is unable to recognize the meaning of the spoken language. And that is called pure word deafness. It is a variant of word decay. So that is auditory association area. Now let's put three things together by means of this dotted line, black line. You can see by the dotted black line, we have encircled three functional areas. We have encircled area 22, that's the auditory association area, which was on the temporal lobe. And we have also encircled 39 and 40, which we had already described in the parietal lobe. These three areas constitute one of the most important language areas, which is again present on the dominant side. And this is collectively called the wording case area, or the sensory or the receptive area. 